Welcome back to Join News Prime. The minority has described President Takufado's State of the Nation address as misleading and fraught with factual inaccuracies which do not reflect the true state of affairs in the country. In the view of the NDC MPs, the poverty rate has increased under the administration. They also accused the president of ballooning the country's national debt, arguing that the current administration has borrowed 165 billion cities in four years, bringing the country's debt to a total of 286.9 billion cities. This, according to the NDC, means every Ghanaian owes 9,500 cities. The MPs have been debating the president's address on the floor of the House. There is extreme polarization with accentuated poverty among Ghanaians in Ghana. In fact, in the last four years, the Nanadu government has plundered this nation into a quandary. Mr. Speaker, in 2016, December 2016, the total debt of our nation stood at 122 billion Ghana cities. Why? I'm saying 122 billion cities because that was what the president told this house in the State of the Nation address in 2017. Mr. Speaker, that is the debt of our nation from the 6th of March 1957 to December 2016. 59 years as a nation, our debt was 122 billion. In December 2020, the debt of our nation has been ballooned to 286.9 billion, according to Bank of Ghana. 286.9 billion, indicating that within the last four years, the MPP government has increased our debt total debt stock by a whopping 165 billion Ghana cities. Was admitting the impact of COVID and how especially the private sector has been struggling. What we did not see was a clear direction, a clear strategy, a stimulus plan to really save the private sector. The president was very proud in talking about how government has succeeded in protecting jobs and incomes of public sector workers. Mr. Speaker, what is the percentage of public sector workers? The business of government is to create the enabling environment for the private sector to create jobs. And we know as we speak today that what the private sector needs. Last two weeks we were hearing Buta talking about increase in, in taxes and the challenges of simply doing business in Ghana. What is government doing in these critical times to really lower taxes and make it easy? Reduce regulation. Let's see how we are doing on the ease of doing business. And Ghana's position, Ghana's position on the World Corruption Index. Are we improving or, or, or are we getting worse? Are we encouraging people to invest in our country? These are very critical. The sharp rebuttal of the side of the House, the majority side of the House, argue that the address delivered by the President is top-notch and reflects what pertains in the lives of people. The MPs observed that in spite of the pandemic, President Akufaru demonstrated leadership by easing the burden of the pandemic on Ghanaians. Public for giving us a state of the nation which was very appropriate and apt about what is happening in Ghana. Just because the state of the nation address has two aspects the historical aspect and the current aspect. Mr. Speaker, it was exciting to hear from the President about the Obatamba Cares Ghana program. This Obatamba program is a program to bring 100 billion dollars, 100 billion cities into the economy to really transform the economy from post-COVID or COVID times to post-COVID situations. Mr. Speaker, those of us who are in education uh, very excited about Obatampa because the first project under Obatampa is supporting commercial farming. The second project is about building the country's light manufacturing sector. The third project, Mr. Speaker, is developing engineering machine tools and ICT digital economy. Those of us in education and training see it as digitizing Ghana's education. Mr. Speaker, the fifth project, sixth project, establishing Ghana as a flat regional hub, 
translate into education as establishing Ghana as an educational hub in the West Africa sub-region. Still in Parliament, the minority is warning the rate at which the current MPP administration is exploiting future revenue due the country will leave subsequent governments with virtually nothing to run the affairs of state. The opposition MP cite, among others, the collateralization of get fund revenue for 10 years and the monetization of cocoa treats for $600 million for a period of seven years. MP for Isunafu South Eric Opoku says the practice amounts to mortgaging the country's future is that after borrowing so much, we have now crossed the IMF debt sustainability threshold of 70%. Ghana's debt to GDP ratio, according to Bank of Ghana, is 74.4%. Even though IMF projects 76.7%, Bank of Ghana is saying 74.4%. But whatever it is, we have crossed the threshold. That gives the indication that Ghana now finds itself in a situation where we borrow to pay interest on loans and we have nothing or little for investment in productive areas that can engender growth, create jobs and reduce poverty in the country. That is the situation now. So government wanted to have a scheme to borrow but not add the amount borrowed to the public debt. So what they decided to do is to securitize future revenues future Mo revenue. yes monetize future revenues like the get fund mm. you know through the get fund Ghanaians pay for the development of education mm. now in the next 10 years they've taken 1.5 billion from the Chinese so when you pay that tax that money should go to the Chinese so, so a sizable percentage of the get fund now belong to the Chinese because of the securitization because of the 1.5 billion dollars they've taken and that is for a, a period of for 10 years. 10 years. Yes. A decade. Yes, a whole decade. So in the next 10 years, we are going to have challenges in respect of education financing. And that is the challenge now. Then you go to the energy sector. You realize that you, you know of this energy sector debt, the legacy debt. Yeah. It has been there for a long time. But President Mama decided to take a bold decision to deal with it once and for all. That was why, in 2015, he introduced the Energy Sector Levies Act. You recall the controversies that emerged after its passage.